Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how I created these two scenes and a transition between them. If you haven't seen this explainer video yet, I'll leave a link in the description box. So we start in Illustrator, let's design a flower. The petals are made of triangles. I modify it slightly, make it elongated and then round the corners. Then I select the Rotate tool or just press R on my keyboard and holding left Alt, I click on a place where I wish my rotation anchor be. Is it called rotation anchor? I'm not sure. I mean the dot around which I need my object to be rotated. As soon as I click, the rotation options appear. And here I select the degrees. In my case, 20 degrees fits and press copy. Not OK, but copy. All I have to do now is duplicate my previous action, which was the 20 degree rotation, as you remember. And I can do this by pressing Ctrl plus D or Command D if you're on a Mac. Boom! This was the hardest part and we got through it successfully. Congrats! Now I'm grouping the petals together, duplicating the group and recoloring them the way I want. I prefer the ones that are on the back to be a little darker shade. Other flowers have been created in the same exact way. They look different because the petals have different shapes and possibly different degrees of rotation. Some petals are united into one object, but the technique is exactly the same at its core. Let's see what else we got here in the first scene. These floating yellow things are pollen particles. The system, Aspire, this explainer video is about, is able to detect pollen particles and also predict the flowering of different plants. And this makes life easier for people who are allergic to any plants. Do you guys have allergies? I do, certainly do. I usually can't breathe for a few weeks in spring. I'm not sure exactly what affects me. I think it's birch trees. Anyways, as you can see, I rotate these black ticks using the same technique that I showed earlier. Looks kind of similar to the reference. The rest is grouping, copying, resizing, and rotating. The second scene is mostly text and a bunch of floating particles. I often duplicate the text layer and use the one which is behind as a kind of shadow. And we also have these lines, which will be animated later. I don't like creating shapes with a pen tool by dragging and then messing around with these handles. It's just not my thing. My go-to method is drawing a rough geometric shape and then rounding the corners where I need. I often use the grid tool to help me. At least in this particular style, it seems like a pretty natural thing to do. Okay, After Effects. Let's recreate text animation first. I choose position from that animate menu and the next parameters I usually add are opacity, sometimes also either rotation or tracking or both. I actually have a separate tutorial where I explain how I animate text. It's quite simple. I'll leave a card for your convenience if you wish to check that out. Sometimes it is worth checking what things will look like if we animate words instead of characters. In some cases it looks more calm and elegant. As for the flower, I assume what I do is pretty straightforward. I don't know if I should command anything here. So in the center of the flower, two circles are animated with a size parameter growing up. Let's recreate this. I normally animate backwards, so the first keyframe I make is the last one in animation. So we begin with 100%, then I go a bit back and change it to 115, 
and then at the very beginning of the layer I change it to 0%. This additional keyframe in the middle, 115, will add a little bounce to animation, which is often good. At least in this case I think it looks nice, and I also shift the top layer by just a few frames so that there is a little more air. I don't know how you want to call what it adds to the animation, it seems to me like there is more air between the layers when they are not glued to each other, do you see what I mean? So, the petals appear in the same way, but it is important to make sure that each anchor point is moved to that sharp part of the petal, because this is where it should grow from, right? The stem is a simple trim path. I also have a separate tutorial almost completely dedicated to trim path effect. I'll also leave a card for it. Let's take a closer look at what exactly happens in this triangle. The triangle itself, since it's a stroke, is animated with a trim path. And a pollen particle just moves across the screen, but there is also this tiny bounce that makes the movement slightly more interesting. The second scene is way more simple. Let's recreate the lines. It's same old beloved friend of mine, Trim Path its name is. But here I also animate both parameters, the start and the end. And what is important to bear in mind that they should be displaced against each other. So the stroke starts to appear and then when the effect is halfway through, it starts to close. Does it make sense what I say? I truly hope so. <laughs> you guys just play with it. You'll quickly find out who is who. Then let's animate our so-called shadow. It's not really a shadow, how do you call it? I think everything is self-explanatory here. Position and opacity are the heroes here. As for the floating particles, they are just accent elements that add a bit more motion to still places. It's a wiggle expression that I use all the time. It's another friend of mine, I almost family, I'd say. How do you add an expression? Let's delete everything and start all over again. When you want to add an expression to any parameter, in this case position, you click on that stopwatch icon holding Alt. And then you'll see this little line appears where you can type in your expression. When it's added to the position parameter, for instance, it makes the element move randomly. Randomly is the key word here. Let's recreate the transition now. So we have an extra scene between the two main scenes, the yellow layer. It's just a bunch of flowers, nothing fancy. It is parented to the bottom pre-com, which is our first scene. It is important to make sure that this extra scene is outside the active frame for now. And then I animate the first scene. As the extra scene is parented, it moves with it. See what it looks like. As a final little touch, we can also parent the second scene to the first one, so that we have this long movement and all our layers move in one direction with one speed. Looks cool to me. Let's see the end result! Yay! I hope this tutorial was useful. If so, give this video a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'll see you next time. Take care!